Good morning, 47. Your target is Cody Haynes, obsessive art collector currently in the process of procuring the complete oeuvre of Cecil Bardou. Haynes went underground six years ago to escape his wife's family after embezzling their fast food empire to pay for his art habit. Freed from all social ties, his collecting took a turn to a dark extreme. Intel shows that he not only needs to possess the artworks, but that he cannot accept any previous owners being left alive. Our client, the gallerist who originally sold the artworks of Cecil Bardou, is worried the killings will taint his business. Furthermore, he owns one of the paintings in his private collection, putting his name on Haynes' kill list. Your target's insatiable need to possess is leaving a bloody trail, and he must be stopped. Good luck, 47. Good afternoon, 47. Your target is currently at Thornbridge Manor to steal a painting by Cecil Bardou. It turns out he's quite the master of disguise. He's pretending to be a wildlife inspector and is equipped with a fake court order to search the premises for a stolen ghost orchid. The client has informed me there will be a bonus if you manage to procure the painting too. Good luck. Mary pointed when she heard Madame Carlyle was still alive, but she didn't even see it herself. It was Fernsby who told her. I can believe that. What a surprise it was. And the family has to pretend she's still dead. Some of them are not happy about that at all. Everything. Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. I mean, that's a breaking heart happening if I ever saw one. Poor thing. Alexa, back from the dead. A make-believe funeral. A murder mystery. Oh, all too much. Don't worry. I'm sure everything will settle down.
I'll double check and get back. Stay here and you'll be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Is anyone there? No, you don't! Yeah. This is Papa Charlie. I have arrived at the location and it looks... Good afternoon, 47. Your target is currently at Thornbridge Manor to steal a painting by Cecil Bardu. It turns out he's quite the master of disguise. He's pretending to be a wildlife inspector and is equipped with a fake court order to search the premises for a stolen ghost orchid. The client has informed me there will be a bonus if you manage to procure the painting too. Good luck. Echo Fox Trot to November Zulu, over. Some troublemaker is making a mess around here. Negative command, got nothing so far. Got nothing here. Let the hunt begin. Copy that. Nothing at my position. Stay alert. Look over there. Okay, okay. Clear. Command, affirmative. Bagging and tagging. Whoa! No, no, no! Ah! Ugh. Mary is so upset that she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective, uh -huh. I'll get to the bottom of this. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I totally understand. Who 
is there? Oh, Mister! Oh, Oh, uh, no. Just a regular key. Go, go! Aaron Ford Jr. Come in. Reporting a possible crime scene. I've got a person on the ground. Possible casualty. Jeez. I need some help here. Can I get some backup? Please uh, leave alone. the area and don't panic. Come in, command. How copy? Over. Someone is causing a public commotion. Command, you copy? I'm at the location now, and I have nothing to report. Over. Affirmative. Moving on. Out. Command, I found a body here at my 20. Please advise. Over. Command, you copy. I'm at the location now, and I have nothing to report. Over.
Sam. Can't you tell me about I should hey, so let you I... go back to Hey, uh... don't oh! to you. Oh, stop pacing, for God's sake, Emma. Why don't we get any kind of explanation? It's not good. <laughs> So, how long have you been working here? About a month now. You're married. It's a hell of a uniform you got there, guy.
Why? Please help me. Anybody. Command, I've arrived at the location and it looks clear. Back to smoking and joking. Over. No sign of him here. Please! <laughs> For Christ's sake. Hey, what seems to be the trouble? There's been an incident. Please, see to it. You did the right thing. Now let us do our thing. Assassin Actual, this is Alpha 1 Hey! Ugh. Don't do that! Help! Don't be... Patrick token to Madame Carlyle's daughter. Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why well, I gave it to her, that sort of thing. <laughs>
Hey, we need some help here. Please, just go and get some help. You'll pay for this! Could use some backup over here, boy. There's a killer on the rampage. What is this, sir? Did you? Did you? Oh. Oh. Over here. Time to step up your I mean, game. Man. There is a guy out there responsible for multiple murders. Nothing here, Command. What the fuck? Ah. Cody Haynes taken care of. If you want to find the painting, this is the time. Then find an exit. I'll transfer the money to your account.
Malbec, notoriously known for conveying the subtle Left. Left. Listen, you're going to end up getting hurt. I wonder if there's anything down there. Did people used to hide relics and treasures? <laughs> I was an attorney. For four decades, I served the law. Now, I serve something false.
serve the land, and the land of Mendoza longs to make wine. I grew up here. These majestic plains were my playground. Yummy. And returning Yes, have a torch, Miguel. I salute you, sir. Thank you, Pablo. Why? Do you have to be like a baby on the side? It's the gate gate of waiting. What are we supposed to do? And there is It's just Place a stupid over torch. There. Enjoy I'm your sure night. Someone's got a light, Miguel. It's traditional. Not gonna go and me. Okay, man. Nobody. I mean, compared to some of the other powers. Fine. We'll improvise. Oh, shame what happened. I mean... It was the most charming little village. Almost made it. Yes. See, sí, perfecto. It was a short stint, but they made their mark. The art society. Mm -hmm. Let's head back to the car. Wherever you go, I go.
Excuse me. If I can have everyone's attention, please. So, here is a question. What did Milton Friedman, Ayn Rand, and Ronald Reagan all have to say about retirement? As far as I am aware, not a damn. Retirement is hardly the most exciting of life stages, but it is the most terrifying. Why? Because the proverbial golf course is the last stop before the morgue? <laughs> Why not? If anything, we are larger in death. Death holds no fear for the great, the accomplished. No, my friends, the thing that scares me is not the death of Don Yates, but the death of Don Yates' attorney at law. The disintegration. Oh no! Deck man. Our Malbec. You'll know rich, sharp tannins with the good shoe leather. Something quite spoiled the party like your guests in it. Corvo, got a message from the boss. Duty calls. Let me guess, the Burnwood woman. That's right. Yates has arranged for the chief winemaker to take Burnwood and Tamara Vidal on a grand tour of the estate. Wants you to tag along. And not for my sparkling personality. This Burnwood woman sure has his panties in a twist. Wonder what the deal is. Yates' business is his business. Just get yourself ready and sign into the visitor center. Oh, and have a drink on my behalf. I don't drink. Makes me sense a private twinnel. Mr. Yates. Yeah, good. You mind telling me what I'm... Okay. Yeah. In fact, a couple of spots. Money On the tour or after. Something touchdown it? Oh, stand by. 
So you're not sure yet? Does that mean there's a plan A? One where I don't stand a 50-50 chance of getting caught? I mean, you do realise the risk here, boss. Broad daylight, workers around. Who exactly is this bird? It's a nice gesture. Yeah, right. But if I'm going to be one of these heralds, you need to start letting me in on it. So who's this for? I'm more of a fear man myself, but if Yates wants to bring the heralds closer together and play the modern boss, I just never framed an urban legend before. Very post truth. Yeah, I like it. Have fun. Hello there. I'm Corvo Black. I'm on the tour. Right. Mr. Black. Welcome. Miss Burnwood and Miss Vidal will meet you down by the wine fields. I trust you know the way. I can find my way around. Enjoy the tour. Fine today, senor. One of the most gifted surveillance specialists ever to graduate. You asked me, the constant must have lost his mind. Burnwood was in league with Grey. She's responsible for killing how many of our Yo! Over here! You two Hi there. must be Burnwood and Vidal. And you must be Yates's garbage man. Sorry, but I didn't catch your name. This is Corvo Black, Tamara. He's a ICA regular. I only work with the best. Well, we're all here, it seems. Except for our guide, the chief winemaker. Looks like we're stuck here until someone fetches him. Mr. Black, I'm looking in your direction. Hold on. I'll track him down. Atta boy. Do try and bring him back in one piece. Counterintuitive as that may be. That was a bit rude. Yes. Yes, it was. What? What is it now? What? You have some guests waiting. Senor Yates wanted you to give them the grand tour, remember? If I don't have more important things to do than babysit Yates socialize friends, it's only harvest season. Better do what he says, patron. Big shot New York lawyer like that. Don't want to get on his bad side. Well, I'm not going anywhere until I have decided if the crop is right for picking. Bring me the three Malbec grapes to taste, Ramon. If Yates doesn't like how I prioritize, he can weigh me down with concrete and toss me off a bridge. How's that? Uh, three grapes, was it? I'll get my picking knife. Here. 
Seriously, who takes another man? Ay, este, este hombre sí no tiene la menor idea de lo que está hablando. Para hacer la bandeja, la bandeja no se hace así. Se hace esa que se, que se le pone ensalada, que se le pone un montón de... de ¿Cómo que dijo él? Que se le pone... Imagínate una barrera invisible entre tú y yo que se extiende de tus manos, de tus brazos hacia mí. Tratemos eso y estemos fuera de esa zona. Es mi espacio personal, ¿entiendes? Mr. Vargas, I have the three grapes you requested. Yes, good. Bring him here. Now, let's see. A lovely inky black color. Good size. Large and firm. Seeds brown. Excellent. And finally, taste. Mm. Sweet, flavorful, robust tannins. Some floral notes. Marvelous. Why? I say these grapes are ripe for harvest. And for the workers, will you, Ramon? I... I have a third to contact. Will do. Lovers. Hello! Welcome to Viñeda Yates. I do apologize for the delay, but the Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief one maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. These are busy times. In fact, we're just about to harvest this year's crop. Hey. Great expectations. Hey. So how do you like Argentina? Like everywhere else, full of Americans. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. We insist on the steaming every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, 
are the Drusty Grape Crashing. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. Are you a wine man, Black? Somehow you don't seem the type. Oh, I believe Mr. Black here is something of a jack of all trades. Isn't that so? I dabble. I see. I just thought Rates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been to our vineyard before? Only on business. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes to its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, yeast converts the sugars in the wine to alcohol, in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser for the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on, do any of you have questions? How about you, Mr. Black? You look like you have something on your mind. I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Certainly. Lead the way. What can you tell me about this device? Great presser, was it? That is correct, senor. After the primary fermentation, the mass is pressed through a fine filter, leaving only the flesh and skins behind. I should add, that grape stomping, the iconic practice of crushing grapes with your bare feet, is historically rare and mostly a tourist gimmick. But you are most welcome to try. Imagine you're a grape. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pass. Go on. I'll take a picture of the three of you. Oh, come on, Tamara. When in Rome. Fine. May I see that, Mr. Vargas? I believe I blinked. So, this is what the little guy feels like. Nope, all good. Looks like one for the mantle. Anything else you wish to know? There's really no trouble. What can you tell me about this freezer? These canisters are called storage units for the keep our excess grape stock to prevent decay. It easily reaches temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Trust me, you don't want to stay in here for long. No kidding. Hey! There's no doorknob on the inside. Seems like a pretty glaring safety omission if you ask me. Probably soundproof too. Callus 47. I believe I taught you better than that. I suppose this concludes the tour. Catch you later, Mr. Black. We'll continue our conversation somewhere less compromising. that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser for the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on... I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Can you tell me about this grape crusher? Of 
Well, as the name implies, it crushes the steamed grapes into a thick pulp or mask by a powerful rotating cylinder. She is one of the most important appliances in our production pipeline. Have you had any workplace accidents? What? Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp? It'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space it has me. He cares well. Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser before the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on, do any of you have questions? How about you, Mr. Black? You look like you have something on your mind. Let's continue to the barrel room, if you'll follow me. Are you enjoying yourself, Mr. Black? Oh, it's all very inspiring. One making is a grand pursuit. Sure, sure, everyone talks about craft beer these days. You can make a decent IPA in your pantry. It is a destiny. No, this is my friends. This is true grandeur. So we arrive to our final stop, the barrel room. This is where we store the wine during the secondary stage of fermentation. The area behind the glass is where we keep our most precious bottles, including a 1945 Grand Paladin, the most expensive wine in existence. The access doors, which are made from ballistic glass, can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Senor Yates now. I shall leave you in his capable hands. How reassuring. Ah, Miss Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little... Harold get together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine Harold. At least the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> Why don't you take a break, Corvo? We're done here for now, I think. Oh, but don't go too far. I may still need your services later. I'll be closer than you think. Oh, almost forgot. 
Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Yates wants the 1945 Grand Paladin brought up to the house. Special occasion. But did aliens land on the front lawn? Have the ghosts of Jesus, John Lennon, and Ava Perone unexpectedly come for dinner? Help me out here. What could possibly be so special? Above your clearance. Meeting in the flowers. Just fetch it already. Fine. Now, the temperature and the Irreplaceable. You don't. Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be Baker. Come on, Flowers. Guests are waiting. Go on, get yourself patted down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs. If you want to come through, I'm gonna need to pat you down. They stopped twitching. You're not making my life easy here. Okay, everything seems to be in order here. Hey, you'll get to stepping, Holmes. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss, disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool-gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. They're already at it. 
Go on, place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. I have always Pardon considered the heralds the entity. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin. One of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary. The proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot. The wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood! And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom! Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? He's got a point. Yes. Perhaps yes. Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. I mean, what, what the? What's You're saying? lying, of course, which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? Yes. I'm yes. In. Yes, I agree. Yes. Listen to yourselves. Don Yate is not even appointed constant yet. And already he conspires to betray his master. I don't pretend to understand Edward's every move, but I do know that this man is an opportunist and unworthy of office. Then you are a traitor to the Heralds. The room is against you, Tamara. Stand down now or share her fate. Edwards will hear about this. I think not. I am sorry, but you brought this on yourself. Mr. Cortazar. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Hey, move it. Let's how go. How are you? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You need to go back I'm warning to you, Yates. Huh? This will not go your way. We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue agent.
floor and get yourself a guard outfit. Gates won't be long. Good. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug courtesan do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping a crime scene, like we discussed. Remote, staged accident. Oh, and Corvo, make it for two. Just improvise. Miss Burnwood. You rolled out the red carpet just for me. Don. You shouldn't have. So confident, even in defeat. I suppose you're not used to danger, always safe behind your screens. Just tell me one thing before we part ways. Why me? Why you? Why would Edwards trust you? Please. It will keep me awake at nights, and I'm 65. I get up four times to piss as it is. Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale, and it's eating him up. He needs to win. Uh -huh. Full, unequivocal you, victory. You, My recruitment was just the feather in his... By the way, you were right about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. Holy shit! No. <sighs> Turns out this woman will be your downfall. If it's any uh, consolation, Don. What are you doing, you asshole? On, Don't I stand there! Will be constant. Shoot her! And I will uh, make it my mission to tear down Providence brick uh, by brick. Uh, 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 Finish it. Uh, uh, such a good boy. Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. Won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh, and dress appropriately.
prompt us. I dare say congratulations are in order. It's done. Now what? Now, we strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. I'm sure you're no stranger to the regular business. I'm not here. Wow. Nothing quite spoils a party like your guests in it. Corvo, got a message from the boss. Many calls. Let me guess the burn. That's right. Yates' business is his business. Just get yourself ready and sign into the visitor center. Oh, 
Have a drink on my behalf. I don't drink. A private talk makes me sentimental. It's not unreasonable. <laughs> 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 Highly sent. Sweet. How do you operate it? I'm a bit of a grease monkey. Try to get inside that safe back there? Of course. I'm human. Tell me you didn't forget this all of us. Oh, I see. What? No Good day to you, sir. Someone's 
Just find another tool. Corval Black. I'm on the tour. Right. Mr. Black. Welcome. Miss Burnwood and Miss Vidal will meet you down by the wine fields. I trust you know the way. I can find my way around. Enjoy the tour. You two must be Burnwood and Vidal. And you must be Yates's garbage man. Sorry, but I didn't catch your name. This is Corvo Black, Tamara. He's the ICA regular. I only work with the best. Well, we're all here, it seems. Except for our guide, the chief winemaker. Looks like we're stuck here until someone fetches him. Mr. Black? Hey, boy. I'm looking in your direction. Hold on. I'll track him down. Atta boy. Do try and bring him back in one piece. Counterintuitive as that may be. That was a bit rude. Yes, yes, it was. Johannesburg calls. And from that smirk of yours, I take it April is in. Vargas? What? What is it now? <laughs> Four decades, I feel so. Yes, I feel something far away. 
Welcome to Vignetta Yates. I'm Gabriel Vargas, chief winemaker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but they're all above your pay grade. We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Follow me. Como estas? First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. Our equipment is state-of-the-art including a drag-in freezer unit. And last but not least, our great crusher. Industrial size for your disposal purposes. Interesting. Follow me, please. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium. In these spacious tanks, which could easily be able to contain a couple of hundred human bodies. The sugars in the wine are converted to alcohol. This is also where we squeeze the must into a fine juice using our grape presser. Fascinating. Come along. Final stop, the barrel room. Nothing dramatic, just wine biding its time. The vault next door contains our most precious bottles, but the access doors are made from ballistic glass and can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. So, unless you're the sparrow, don't get any idea. Here comes Mr. Yates now. Perfect timing. Ah, Miss Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little Herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine herald once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin. Bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Yates wants the 1945 Grand Paladin brought up to the house. Special occasion. What? What? Did aliens land on the front lawn? Have the ghosts of Jesus, John Lennon, and Ava Perone unexpectedly come for dinner? Help me out here. What could possibly be so special? Above your clearance. Meeting in the flowers. Just fetch it already. Fine. What's the passcode again? Last year of World War II. 
You have to look it up. Are you all right, Patron? Uh, I'm fine, Santino. It's just... Oh, the 1945 Grand... <laughs> Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be bigger. Come on, Flowers. Guests are waiting. Go on, get yourself patted down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs getting offed. I gotta search you, sir, if you wanna come through this way. Funny, my mother always said I had good hands. Said I should have been a surgeon. Okay, you're all fine. Off you go. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss, disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool-gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. Place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. Pardon me. I have Your always Majesty. considered the heralds the unspoken. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin. One of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary. The proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot. The wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable, because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, 
our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood! And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom! Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Absolutely right. Yes. Perhaps yes. Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. Got it. What did she say? You're lying, of course, which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? I'm in. I agree. Yes. 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 Listen to yourselves. Don Yate is not even appointed constant yet. And already he conspires to betray his master. I don't pretend to understand Edward's every move, but I do know that this man is an opportunist and unworthy of office. Then you are a traitor to the Heralds. The room is against you, Tamara. Stand down now or share her fate. Edward's. We'll hear about this. I think not. I am sorry, but you brought this on yourself. Mr. Cortazar? Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue Agent 47. Tamara Vidal, who saw through the assassin's disguise, was, alas, killed as well. This is what you will all attest to. I'm in. Yes. I agree. Yes. 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 